Hey everybody, hope you're all doing really good. I'm going through a basket of logic boards that was left here after data recovery, boards where the customer just didn't want the device shipped back. And I'm running into one here that is probably just a little bit too good not to share. So right now this board looks like this. In the spot where we would normally have the IC that creates VDD boost, we now have a charcoal hole with like little visible hairy gangly snaggly little trace things sticking up here and there that just have no business being out on top of the logic board. So this chip U2301 is actually supposed to go here only to get this working I have mounted it upside down over here and with that I managed to get the data off of this board. So when this first arrived here it actually didn't look near as bad as it did after I worked on it. Now it arrived here with the description of the audio IC having been removed and also this little IC next to it having been removed. Now this don't really look like it's it's been removed. It looks more like it's been extracted like a, a wisdom tooth or something like it had roots hooked to it and they just kept pulling. Now this IC U2300 it sits between VDD main and VDD boost. So what happens is if you get a short out on VDD boost, that IC is left stuck in the middle and that IC begins to get hot. And what happened with this board, this technician seen that this IC was getting hot. So they did what we do with a lot of capacitors and just popped it right off the board. So the boost IC, it's not near as important as this little IC next to it. This is our logic EEPROM IC. If anything happens to this IC, I will not be able to get the data out of this phone, so it is very important not to damage it. So looking at U2301 on the board view, we've got VDD main coming in, we've got VDD boost going out, and then having a look at the schematic, you can see we've got the same exact thing. We've got VDD main coming in, and then on the output side of this, we have got a whole ton of capacitors, and we know from experience that random shorts on these main power lines are typically caused by capacitors. So the very next thing I did was check VDD boost for a short to ground and what do you know? VDD boost was a flat short to ground. So that meant that this board was mutilated over what was most likely going to be a single short to ground on VDD boost and not only a single short but over what was most likely going to be a shorted capacitor. So I spent some time going over the board view and looking at the schematics and I made decisions as to which of the missing pads we were going to need and which ones we were not. Now it's kind of hard to see exactly what's going on in this condition so I needed to get some flux on it and just kind of start shining everything up and cleaning it up so we can see what sort of carnage is going on on the board. <laughs> it's actually not too bad. These people, these people left me six pads. They left me at least six pads. Now I'm cleaning this off with some isopropyl alcohol so we can get a good look at what is going on once we got all the carnage and flux and everything out of the way. Oh good, we've got some hair left over. Mmm. Right, we're not going to want hairy balls, so let's go ahead and get that out of the way. The next part of this process was pretty extensive. I carved around on the board and I dug out any vias and little bits of leftover traces and, and anything on the vital lines that I would be able to use. And I soldered on little jumpers and created our little snakes and repaired the pads and got this thing ready to receive a brand spanking new IC. Each one of our new pads is covered in green UV mask. Then after the mask is cured up, I come back through and carefully scratch off just the top layer. Now this is a little bit time consuming, so I'm just going to kind of go ahead and speed through the process. There we go. It looks pretty much brand new. Next, I needed to change the alloy on my chip. The solder that I use to attach the jumpers to the board, that is leaded solder, for putting the chip on top of those pads, I wanted it to melt just a little bit lower than that. So what you're going to see here, this is low melt. This melts significantly lower than leaded solder, but it can be just a little bit more tricky to work with when using it to reball things. So here we go, we're just going to warm this up and form us some nice semi-symmetrical balls. A little bit more. There we go. 
Nice and pretty. Ugh. So here comes the moment we've all been waiting for. We're going to get this little spot on the board sort of tinned up here and ready to receive this brand spanking new chip. So once I got them tinned up, I just start finagling this IC down in there, you know, kind of sort of about where it goes. And then I just go ahead and bake it right on down with hot air and very carefully float this thing into place on top of all of that carnage I just repaired. Now let's not forget about that original problem. Remember we had a VDD boost short? Ooh, what do we have here? Watch this capacitor right here. Ooh. I think we can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that's the one. So the original shop that worked on this, all they had to do to get this up and running was pop this little capacitor out of place. That would have relieved the little short to ground on VDD boost. Their customer would have gotten their data back immediately. They would have gotten a working phone and saved this board a trip from New Zealand all the way to the United States. So at this point, I had repaired enough of the carnage to get a working boost IC. But look at what happens the moment that I connected power. That is a lot of work to go through to have something just catch on fire. So I thought, surely I must have made a mistake. So I went ahead and took the IC off of there and I had a good look at its balls and all of the balls looked fine. I checked all the pads for continuity and shorts and everything seemed fine. So I went ahead and put another new IC on this board. And what do you know? Absolutely nothing changed. It still got extremely hot the moment that I connected power. I couldn't find any immediate shorts around the IC. Everything seemed to be within normal limits. But when I removed the IC, absolute carnage. They may have ripped the chip off the board, but I turned this board into charcoal. So I found a new home for U2301, and I glued it down with some B something thousand adhesive. And then I sealed the deal with, I bet you can guess it, green UV mask. Dun, 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 so once the mask was all cured up, then it was time to start wiring. Here comes the fun part. This chip has 16 pins on the bottom of it, and we're going to need a good handful of them hooked up in order to get it working. The first jumper that gets hooked up here is VDD main. So the wire that I use here, this is magnet wire. It looks just like a, a regular little copper wire, only it has a plastic coating on it. So it is okay for some of these wires to kind of touch here and there, but I still don't like to let that happen. I try to route the wires in such a way that, you know, they're uniform and all pretty and, and, and don't touch each other. But you'll see by the end of this repair, that was kind of difficult. And it looks like I've got no better way to cut a wire, so we'll just... Do it like this. There we go. Now this totally sweet looking liquid that I'm adding here, this is flux. It's needed if you want solder to flow. So here I'm just connecting the other end of this jumper here. This is PP underscore VDD underscore boost. And we've got that out on top of the board where it shouldn't be. So with the first couple of jumpers in place, it was time to figure out what to do with the boost LX coil. This coil, it's on the board, it's unharmed on the other side, but I don't have any way to hook to it. So I decided to grab us a donor boost LX coil and just kind of redo that part of the circuit. These coils, they're kind of tricky to harvest. You don't want to pull up on them. You really want to kind of swipe them off to the side or they'll hemorrhage a big chunk out of the bottom. So I decided to put our new boost LX coil right where the audio IC used to be. I think everybody could agree that uh, this board does not deserve to have the audio IC replaced. So now I'm just going to start wiring up this new coil. This wire needs to hook onto VDD main, so I'm just going to solder that on right back here like that. That ought to do it. Now because I'm a dummy and I made a fluxy mess, I'm going to go ahead and clean this back up with some alcohol so that we can get our coil to stick down. And right here is where our Boost LX coil is going to go. Look familiar? Looks kind of like that last Trinity video, doesn't it? So the new Boost LX coil 
It's going to sit there just like that in our puddle of green goo. And then cure it up with UV light. All right, we've got that all cured up. And now it's time to go ahead and hook up the other end of this wire. It's going to hook right on there like that. So we'll just trim it off right there. This is the VDD main side of our Boost LX coil. Now, I know this doesn't really have to be pretty, but I always do my best to try to make it look brand new, even whenever it's Frankenstein. Oh, yeah, baby. So for the majority of the rest of this process, there's virtually no brain activity at all. This is just looking at the board view, connecting wire, looking at board view, connecting wire. Hmm. Let's see, where does that LCM to Manny B-Sync hook up at? Here I'm just looking at a donor board because I've got so much carnage on the customer's board, I can't exactly tell where I'm going to solder the wire to. So I have to look at a somewhat good board so that I can get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. Oh yeah, this is much more clear now. That Manny B-Sync line, that is going to hook on right about here. There we go. Well, that takes care of Manny B-Sync. Next, we are going to go after our Boost Enable line. Now, this line is actually going to connect to two of the pins. We needed to connect to pin A1 and also to pin C1, as you'll see here. Now, I don't remember exactly, but I believe I checked this chip for continuity between the two pins. And I made a decision that I was indeed going to need to hook up both pins and not just one of them. So with that, I pretty well had all of the nuts and bolts jumpers out of the way. But for this chip to work, we need some data communication. So last, I hooked up our I2C0 lines. One of these is the SDA line for the data. And then we have one more that is the clock line that keeps everything communicating in time. Now, the final jumper that I hooked up was ground, and since we've mounted this IC right up against this capacitor, it actually made hooking ground up really easy. It's just one wire right across here. Now, I still needed to deal with this charcoal mess. I had what was possibly unknown traces touching each other that I had to kind of scooch around a little bit. Ooh, have I found what caused this to catch on fire the first time? So after dead bugging this IC onto another part of the board, we still have a short under the IC. So to get rid of this little short, I literally just cleaned away the black char with alcohol. After that, the short had been relieved. And then I was pretty concerned at this point. So I went through here and just checked absolutely everything I could with a multimeter to be sure we didn't have any really crazy readings. But most of all, worried about shorts and things that could cause my last hours worth of work to just, you know, burst into flames. So with that, I am happy to say that this recovery has been successful. Now, a lot of people ask me, why is it that I am not transferring the memory and the CPU and the Logic EEPROM over to a known good board to recover data? To be completely honest, if I had known then what I know now, that is exactly what I would have done to recover this board. I would have spent much less time on it and it would have been less risky for the customer's data. So that is going to be the end of this video. I really thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Have a good day. At least some of you have got to be wondering if VDD main is four volts and VDD boost is four volts, what would stop a guy from just kind of, you know, just kind of, Hooking those two together, I wonder exactly what this board would do. Let's find out. There we go, we'll just kind of yank that wire off of there. Now I don't really know why Manny B-Sync would be hooked up to VDD Boost, but we'll just kind of properly remove that one. There we go. Now I also want to be sure that we don't have any data communications, so we will just kind of properly remove those. There we go, there's our I2C lines disconnected. I wind up using this board as a complete total donor. Oh yeah, let's peel that right off there like a band-aid. Oh yes. Okay, now we're going to take VDD main and smack it right here onto VDD boost. There we go, we have VDD main soldered directly to VDD boost. And let's just go ahead and make sure we don't have anything over here shorting out.
There we go. That pretty much does a good job. So now, with VDD Boost bridged directly to VDD Main, we're going to hook up our 7 Plus lead. Now we're going to turn our power supply on. We're getting a pleasant 0 amps. And now I'm going to press the button to boot in 1, 2, 3, boot. 70 milli big ones, 200. Watch it boot up and run fine. I will absolutely, completely lose my ever loving mind if this phone boots up and runs with VDD boost just jumped. Here we go, or 300 milliamps. The screen just got brighter. That means this thing, it's gonna boot. Yeah, there you have it. We have working touch and uh, golly, look at that. <laughs> now I'm sitting here stuck and I've already ended this video, but I don't actually know how to end this video. See, I put a whole lot of work into this one and all I had to do was Jumper that little boost I see. I don't know, maybe if I tell myself that it's going to reboot after three minutes or something catastrophic would stop have stopped me from getting the data. Maybe, maybe that'll help me feel better. Probably not. Hello, Miss Smith? Yeah, your audio I see repair, it went, it went well. Yeah, yeah, no problems at all. It, it's good to go.